That is a ton of fun. Like I said, we had two uh, actors here from the Tucson Improv Movement. I really cannot fucking recommend that theater enough, that group enough. Please go check them out. They just got their new space, and it's absolutely fucking fantastic. Please, let's make some noise for Ben Dietzel, everybody. Woo! Hi, hello everybody. Hi, my name's Ben Dietzel, as you heard before. Um, and uh, unfortunately, with a name like that, uh, a lot of times people who are stupid tell me it sounds like Vin Diesel. And, uh, which is unfortunate because like, my dad brought that up once. I'm like, you fucking named me that, you <laughs> asshole. Uh, but, <laughs> did someone just say Riddick? <laughs> Yes, that was a Vin Diesel movie. No, I didn't even see it. Um, yeah, I share nothing in common with Vin Diesel. Uh, I can wear sleeves. Just fine. No problem. No allergies. None of that. Uh, my best friend's still alive. <laughs> oh, shit. Kiss him. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but there's a door open. Okay. All right. Um, so the only thing, uh, the only celebrity I bear any resemblance to is uh, I clearly uh, sh built a laser in my attic and shrunk my kids with it. Uh, <laughs> got that going. Got that going. Uh, I, I don't know if anyone else uh, remembers growing up seeing on uh, on TV shows. There was always that assignment that like kids in high school would have, where they would take an egg home for the week and uh, to simulate parenting. Because I guess it's that easy if you can just, if an egg survives, you're, you're equipped to, to care for life. I guess it's that simple. But I always wanted that assignment because I would have uh, taken the egg to the teacher's desk, set it down, stared her in the face, and just smashed it. And said, uh, yeah, me and my partner were pro-choice. <laughs> Because it's true, you're a high schooler. The responsible thing to do is exterminate that pregnancy. You should get an F if that egg survives, because you had Gatorade and a Hershey bar for lunch. <laughs> you aren't going to make the right decisions for taking care of a child, that's clear. Also, I remember, I remember uh, growing up, it was like in middle school, you would watch high school movies, and I always assumed that like high school movies were like, that's what it's like. So, so I was always under the impression then, because of the movies I watched, that if, if I wanted a girl to like me, I would just have to tell her how I feel. Because that's what happens in the movies. Like, oh, hey, do you like this girl? Just tell her how you feel. That's all you gotta do. Uh, that's not what you do because um, when you're a 15-year-old guy, none of your thoughts that you have in your head should be said out loud at all, much less to girls who don't yet know what you do with all of your spare time. <laughs> like, because it's just furious masturbating. That's all you think about. That's all you do. Like, you wouldn't just go up to a girl who's like a few. Oh, oh, hey, Stacy. Um, do you want to come over to my house after school and watch me play video games so my dad doesn't think I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't just be like, oh, oh, uh, hey, Rebecca, I think it's great how your hair smells like my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, hey Tiffany, I want to tell you that I really want to finger you. <laughs> like, you wouldn't just say what you're feeling to a girl in high school. Like, that would <laughs> fail miserably every time. You should never say those things. Uh, but eventually I got through high school uh, very unsuccessfully with women. And, but eventually uh, I, got, I got around to doing well. And uh, you know, on, on occasion, um, a, uh, a girlfriend will, will perform fellatio on me, which I think it's weird that it's called performing, because it's not like it's not like there's an intermission halfway through. Like, you know, a guy with a little broom and dustpan cleaning up and done. Uh, so I don't know why it's called performing fellatio, but uh, she was down there once uh, doing what the women do down there, and uh, I looked down and I noticed, and she had her hand on it, but she had her pinky up. <laughs> Ever so daintily, as though she had learned the art of fellatio, you know, at Oxford <laughs> with Mary Poppins, picking <laughs> up like a classy gal. But then I realized she had her pinky up because there was just no room for it. 
which made me sad, but it was fine because I'm used to finishing while crying. <laughs> Nothing out of the ordinary there. Um, another thing, uh, now, I'm, I'm not telling anyone that they have to do this. This is merely a suggestion for females in the audience. Uh, live your life exactly how you want to. I'm not telling you to do anything. This is merely a suggestion. It's, it would be as though like I suggest, hey, you should wash your car more often because uh, it just looks dirty. Um, I think the way women choose to shave their private areas is, is off. I don't want you to, I don't think women should shave their entire area down there. I think that's weird. I agree. It makes, you know, it's, it's like it's childish. Uh, in appearance, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but, but I think that the focus of shaving needs to be like flipped over. You know, most women like shave the top, kind of leave the bottom, you know, just a little bit, you know, but flip that over, because I'm not eating out your bladder, <laughs> is my thoughts. You know, shave where the action's happening, leave it up top, I don't care. Make it look like Bob Ross's afro, I don't care. <laughs> Leave Adam Carolla's eyebrow just above, you know, what I'm doing work, because then I'll just use that as like a welcome mat when I'm done on the way up to kiss you. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't like, you wouldn't mow all the grass at a park except for the grass on the baseball field. <laughs> Merely a suggestion. Like if you if you had a boyfriend who was a lumberjack. You know, big head of hair, big beard, and you like subtly dropped hints that you didn't like kissing him with his beard, and then he came home with just a bald head. <laughs> you'd be super confused. <laughs> make any sense to anybody involved. Just, just, just something to consider. Something to consider. Not telling you to do anything. Merely a suggestion. Um, while we're on the topic of, of just all things intimate. Uh, I think it's weird how, uh, guys, we equate our sexual achievements with baseball terminology, you know, like uh, first base is whatever making out, third base is when like she makes a sandwich afterward without you even asking her. It's just a really nice favor she does for you. Um, but I gotta believe that like in Utah, the Mormons also use the base system, but it's just like way more innocent, you know, it's just like, hey, uh, me and, me, and, me and Diana got to first base the other day, just full eye contact for like five seconds. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, second base is like sharing a soda in a closet, something weird. <laughs> Third base is like kissing without shoes on. <laughs> and then a home run is just full on anal fisting. Because <laughs> you can't have vaginal sex, that's a sin. <laughs> a sin. Uh, so, uh, whenever people find out that I, that I do uh, comedy, they always say the same thing. They're like, oh, hey, um, tell me a joke. And I'm like, oh, hey, you're a hooker. I don't pay you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, I don't do that to other people. Like, I wouldn't go up to, you know, a, a, an attorney and be like, oh, hey, you're an attorney. Well, why don't you take my wallet and give this to my ex-girlfriend, and I'll sleep in a bus stop for a year and a half. Uh, you know, I wouldn't go up to a police officer and be like, oh, hey, you're a police officer. Uh, well, why don't you, uh, you know, give me, why don't you give me a jaywalking ticket instead of going and, and fixing a domestic violence problem, because that's just, you know, well, that would make too much sense. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go up to a trucker and be like, oh, hey, you're a trucker. Do this pile of meth in front of me. <laughs> Like, like, like you, sir, what do you do for a living? I serve tables. You serve tables. Like, so you work in a restaurant. Right. Right, you work in a restaurant. I'm assuming you're not just serving tables randomly, people at the library. <laughs> you're just going like, oh, it's because I can't get anything for you. All we have is water. You have to go to the fountain for it. Um, <laughs> but no, like, if you work in a restaurant, so I'm sure people don't come up to you and be like, oh, hey, you work in a restaurant. Can we take a cigarette break together? <laughs> I work in restaurants. Everyone smokes. <laughs> All right, this has been a lot of fun, and uh, I really, I really enjoyed this. I uh, hope the rest of you enjoy the show, and uh, have a good night. My name is Ben. <laughs> one more time for Rick Moranis, everybody. No, seriously, one more time for Ben Diesel, though, guys. Right. Yeah. One more time for Ben Diesel. Jesus Christ, that show was fantastic. What is the matter?